is in the name of the Lord. You, O Lord, have the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand. But we bear his forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro of the Lord's Day. God is in his holy habitation. He settles the solitary in a home. The Lord God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. But the righteous shall be glad, and they shall exalt before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. O God, when you went out before your people, in your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. Let us be the Lord, who is the earth of the Son, God of our salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God is in his holy habitation. He settles the solitary in a home. The God of Israel, he is one who gives power and strength to his people. <clears throat>
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive me those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things that we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Trinity is from Genesis chapter 4. Now Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother, Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruits of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from the hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone who kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. The Lord put a mark on Cain, lest anyone who found him should attack him. <clears throat> this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gratitude. In God, my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exults, and with my song, I give thanks to him. To you, Lord, I call my heart. Not death to me. Hear the voice of my peace for mercy, and I cry to you for God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, Unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, 
then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. We confess together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of God, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was imparted by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. And was crucified also for us in the conscious pilot. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of your life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Believe it or not, it's been almost a whole year now that I have been with you at Zion since I preached my first sermon here on, on this text. As your new pastor, feeling like a Pharisee, I thank God for all that he blessed me with, bringing me to you and joyfully praying that we would work together in the coming years uh, for God's kingdom. Now, after a year, feeling more like a tax collector, I pray that God would continue to shower his grace and mercy upon us all, covering our sins by the blood of Jesus, faithfully guiding us through all the struggles that come to us through the days, weeks, months, and years that we have ahead of us. Both the Old and the New Testaments have two characters that act and live differently. For whatever reason, we can identify with one, maybe more than the other of these characters. So if you're the oldest in your family, maybe you can associate more with Cain being the oldest, the firstborn of Adam and Eve, uh, and identify with them how much work you have to do in caring for all your younger siblings. If you're younger or the youngest in your family, maybe you can relate to Abel a little bit more, not being appreciated for what you bring to the family. God accepts Abel's sacrifice, not Cain's. It's not that God loves Abel because he's the baby, but because Abel's sacrifice is offered in faith. The book of Hebrews tells us in, in Hebrews chapter 11, that faith chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commended him, accepting his gifts. What was it? It was Abel's faith. Wasn't Abel's gift was better because of his age, or because it was an animal sacrifice rather than a grain offering? But Abel's faith made the difference. So God speaks with Cain in order to get him back on track, to get him to drop his resentment of Abel, and then in his faith, offer a better sacrifice, grow in faith and not anger. Let's not know how it turned out. Cain did not have faith in his heart, but murder. He placed his faith in his works, in, in his own righteousness to please God and make himself acceptable. And that's also the problem in the gospel lesson. Jesus tells this parable to some who were trusting in themselves and their own works to be righteous before God. And in his self-righteous prayer, the Pharisee explains to God all the things that he has not done, extorting money. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not even like this tax collector. As well as all the things that he has done that makes his works acceptable to God. Giving his offerings, fasting two times a week. This pompous prayer of the self-righteous deeds is heard by many around him. And they're probably agreeing, saying, yeah, this guy looks like he's pretty righteous there. Look at his deeds. That shows he has faith. But his prayer is heard by God and rejected because it isn't praying in faith toward God. This good man has not offered any good deeds to serve his neighbor, nor has he confessed any sins or asked God for mercy and forgiveness. On the other hand, all the tax collector can do in the presence of God is trust in the sacrifices that are offered to God there in the temple. Those sacrifices that will make satisfaction for his sin. Those sacrifices that will make him holy in God's eyes. He brings nothing before God but all his sins. 
and he cries out in humility for God to be merciful with his eyes lowered and beating his chest. These two characters, along with many others, were gathered in the temple in Jerusalem for one of the daily times of sacrifice and prayer in the morning and the afternoon, the early evening. The liturgy of the service, along with all the rising smoke from the sacrifice and, and from the incense, makes the Pharisee feel good about himself and his life and his choices. But they make the tax collector feel the crushing weight of his sin. The Pharisee thought God owed him a good life for all his obedience, and the tax collector believed he only deserved punishment from God, not mercy, not grace. So which of these two do you feel like when you come to church? You come dressed in your good church clothes to show to others that God has blessed you? So therefore, you must be doing the right things in your life, and so therefore others can be more like you? Or when you confess your sins, are you thinking about all that you have done wrong this past week or month, and all the things that have distracted you from God and your faith and your trust in Him? Or are you thinking about all the good things that you've done? And the sins you've not committed during the week? Or are you confessing to God all the temptations you've given into, all the good deeds you've failed to do for your neighbor in Christian love? The reason why we gather here together for the divine service each week, and the reason why the tax collector went to the temple was not to give God something, even to give him our worship. We call it the divine service because we believe that when we gather, it is in order for God to serve us with his gifts, his word, his sacraments. Not for us to give something to God. The only things we're gathered here to give to God is our sins. Asking that he would remove them far from us, forgive us, cleanse us from all iniquity, and send us then back out into the world to serve our neighbors in faith. Witnessing to them with our words. Witnessing to them with our good deeds about what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. We receive God's word so that we may see our sins, our failings, confess them to God like the tax collector. We use the tax collector's words this morning in the service. I said that. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's part of our confession of sin in this service. What would a pious, good, holy Pharisee look like today? Well, we go to church just like a Pharisee, right? Wear nice clothes, be respected by his neighbors and co-workers, she would pay her taxes, drive the speed limit, be employee of the month. He'd admit that he's a sinner, but he'd be aware that he's not the kind of sinner that would abuse drugs or call someone a racist. He might think, even thank God that he's not like certain other people who push their beliefs on others, who censor the speech of others because they don't have the same ideology. Well, first he might look like you or me in the mirror because we have that old Adam still in us that we have inherited, just like Cain did from Adam and Eve. We're the person that looks good on the outside, but is filled with the sin on the inside. Can you recognize that? How different this world then would be today if we all had that attitude? If we could just take direction from God's word like Cain was supposed to do? to correct our sinful words and actions? If only we could be humble before God and others, recognizing that what we do have is not what we've earned, but what God has granted to us out of his love and mercy for sinners. God has been gracious and merciful toward you. He sent Jesus to be beaten 
for your sins, to be verbally abused, to be taunted for the disobedience of you, also that you could be reconciled to God, reconciled through Jesus' sacrifice, the sacrifice he made for the sins of the world on the cross. Better sacrifice than even Abel's sacrifice. The sacrifice that removes the sin of the world. As you go home today, do you believe that you've been reconciled by the blood of Jesus' sacrifice for you? Or are you good with God because of your actions that aren't really too bad when you compare them with the actions of others? None of our words, none of our deeds are impressive to God because He sees the sin of our black hearts and the praise we give ourselves. When you say, God, be merciful to me, think about your sins. Think about what Jesus did to remove them when you died on the cross. God is merciful to those who come to Him, to Trust in Him for deliverance and peace. Trust in Christ for His perfect forgiveness for all your sins that lifts you up from the pit of despair and then see your good deeds as the fruit of God's peace to the world. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please stand for our prayers. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Be merciful to us, Heavenly Father, for daily and much do we sin and transgress your holy will. For the sake of the perfect life and the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, forgive our sins. Fill us with your Spirit, that we would remain humble, never forgetting that we have been saved by grace, through faith, which is not our own doing, but your gracious gift. Lord, in your mercy, be merciful to our neighbors, especially those who have sinned against us and done us harm. Give us patience and strength that we would deal with them gently and humbly, that we would be ready to forgive as we have been forgiven. For in your mercy, be merciful to your church both here and in every place. Send forth faithful servants to deliver your grace and mercy to sinners in need. Defend all pastors from arrogance and pride, and strengthen them in the faithful preaching of your word. That true unity in the faith would be found wherever Christ crucified is proclaimed. For in your mercy, we are prayer. Be merciful to our leaders that they would exercise the authority given them with wisdom and righteousness. So that we would be enabled to live in freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. be merciful to all those in need, especially children who lack food, clothes, clothing, shelter, and provide for their needs. Look in mercy also upon all orphans who are in need of parents to care for them. Provide them with loving fathers and mothers. Until such provision is realized, bless those who care for them. That they would do so in love, which is filled with mercy and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, be merciful to the sick and the sorry, including to the altar who continues to recover, that they would receive not only temporal relief, but that in all times and places and under all circumstances they would know the forgiveness of their sins and the hope of eternal life won for them in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, 
Be merciful to those who come to the holy altar today, that they would approach your throne of grace humbly and with reverence, and that they would receive the true body and blood of Christ in faith for their highest good, being united in one holy fellowship with all of your saints. For in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love, shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns through all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we long and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet, in your great mercy, you, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Let's do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Let's do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. Now that your body and blood of our Lord and Savior <coughs> Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve your body and soul to life everlasting. Are in peace. Amen. Thank you. 